I hate it. I really do. But the first thing I do when I wake up, you guessed it, I check my phone. And no doubt, on all across my feeds, whether it be on Instagram, on Twitter, on Pinterest, I see pictures of really beautiful women. And what I can't help but notice is all of these beautiful women comply to certain beauty standards. The Western women I see on my feeds usually have tan skin, a small and slim physique, a very high nose bridge paired with very prominent cheekbones and a very structured jaw, and pouty lips. Whereas the Asian women I see on my feeds usually have pale skin, double eyelids with big eyes, a, um, a V-shaped face is what they call it, a slim figure, and again, pouty lips. Such trends that I just mentioned before are boosted by people who you might know as influencers. People like the Hadids, the Jenners, Dua Lipa, Dove Cameron, for instance, they all fall under this huge umbrella term of influencer. And they all hold a sway over their target audience, or in other words, you guys. Such heavily edited images of beauty that you see on their feeds and on your feeds are shared across the media and the world by people who have a primarily Western outlook on what is primarily Western media. So it's no doubt here that the Western beauty trend gets the most exposure. And yes, indeed, it is a trend. The, these beautiful women complied to the beauty standard today, but the beauty standard today was somewhat related to the beauty standard yesterday, and the beauty standard yesterday was somewhat related to the beauty standard the day before, and so on and so forth. Which leads me to my first question. Who invented the very vast concept and idea of beauty in the first place before the invention of social media? Was it fashion houses in their auteur shows and their designers? Was it influenced by certain critics? Was it, some, was it something someone glamorous said or did and someone just copied it? Or was it simply written in the stars? Now, for argument's sake, let's say it was in fact written in the stars. By some unexplainable twist of fate, new beauty trends are born. Why? Why would anyone want to model themselves after something that will probably be gone in one year, two years, three perhaps, 10, just something that you know has an expiry date to it? You wouldn't, right? Anyone can see that there is no mathematical equation behind someone we call a beautiful woman. From the pictures of Aphrodite in ancient Greece and the images of Marilyn Monroe yesterday and Bella Hadid today, we can see that there is no definite form of beauty as they all look somewhat different. And I mean, there are people out here today self-harming themselves to fit into these toxic beauty standards. And by self-harming, I mean taking a knife to their skin and pulling it this way and that way, adding fillers here and there and a bit of chemi just chemicals all over the place, right? But that's not the part that makes it toxic. The part that makes it toxic is they're doing it just because other people are doing it as well and not because they are truly happy and truly content with what they want to do. And in Asia, the beauty industry, which was the name for the thing that I just mentioned before, is so much more tortuous to women than that of the West. As you might know, the most popular influencers in the world are Western, selling their brand of beauty in what is primarily Western media. Let's take Thailand, for example. Who are the most beautiful Thai women? Well, a quick Google search will come up with names such as Yaya, Bella, and Kimberly, who are all very successful actresses who have made it big in the Thai film and entertainment industry. And it's become such a pervasive part of Thai society to see beauty associated with the Western features rather than the Eastern features. So now I raise my second question. What does this mean for children like myself, who don't have Western mothers or fathers brought up on a diet consisting of beautiful women who don't look much like them. Well, it doesn't take a genius with, let's say, 167 IQ to see that this impact might not be so good. On a good day, these children, like myself again, might just feel not might just not feel so secure in their own bodies, but on a bad day, they'd have to do their face some serious damage to end up with those big eyes and prominent cheekbones and a high bridge to their nose. 
So this is why I am here today. I myself have struggled with trying to relate to these issues, which just seem more explainable as fairies, let's say, rather than anything based on factual science. And I'm not going to stand here today and point fingers and blame people, or even social media for this instance. It's, but it's the absolutely blind and gormless way in which everybody around me seems to have been drugged by this belief in which I can only describe again as something mythical, like unicorns. Let's take, for example, teens a century ago. Teenagers a century ago weren't worrying about how they looked like or how much they weighed. They're out with their friends having fun, right? But now it's more common to see a 13-year-old girl or boy standing in front of a mirror telling themselves that they aren't enough or standing on top of a scale finding the next best way to lose weight. So now I raise my final question. Isn't it time? Isn't it time for Thai people and people all around the world to appreciate beauty on a much wider range of beauty standards or just not have them at all? After all, we cannot afford the next generation to grow up insecure and self-loathing, can we? The next generation must grow up appreciating diversity, but more importantly, be secure in their own bodies, in their own faces, in their own weights, in their own personalities. And the solution to that, you may ask, representation. Representation is one word with such a big impact. Once children like myself and many others see people who look like themselves on the TV screens and on their phone screens, they're not going to have to compare themselves to these unrealistic beauty standards, will they? So let's all work together to create a world where we banish the beastly facade of beauty, where the inner you, me, or I doesn't feel as though we aren't enough. Thank you.